Hey guys, Luke here, and here we have it. Uh, this is another episode, episode 3. I don't know uh, why I started that so weirdly, but, you know, well, I'll take it. And I just realised I haven't got my uh, little earphones plugged in, so I'll just plug that in while we have a look at Jack Reed, uh, which I think, um, some in the comments, I forget who it was, it might have been random comments anywhere, everywhere, whatever that means. I'll go through and I'll uh, have a look uh, while it's doing this. So that's Thurston right there, and uh, the team, um, which I don't know if it's going to be the title or not, but it's going to be the best signings um, of the year. It's going to be NRL because I'm not really up to date uh, with Super League, but here's our side here. I have got the team line up um, in front of me, so um, yeah, so the video was, it's probably uh, random games everywhere. Oh, sorry, not video, the comment I was talking about. But not to worry, oh, it was Super League Reviews, one of them. Uh, which, if you haven't watched them, check out his videos. Uh, not, I haven't seen him in a little while, but yeah. So, we're going to start off with the best signings of 2014 in the NRL. This is just my opinion, uh, mind you. So, uh, don't get too cut up if, like, your favourite player or someone with your favourite team uh, isn't in it. Um, and hopefully, um, you grieve me somewhat. So, we're going to start off at fullback, and I'm going to say Sam Tompkins being a gun player for uh, the Warriors. Um, is he much of an improvement on um, Kevin Locke? I don't know, but I think Kevin Locke definitely had a place in the side and just where, I don't know. But Tompkins, is, he's a superstar and I think he'll be around for a long time. Um, but yeah, super good player. And he's English, so I, th I honestly think because he's English, he doesn't get the raps he deserves. But, whatever. Um, and you know how much I like him because he's in my squad. He's in my squad. Um, so yeah, that pretty much says it all. So that's our fullback out of the way. Go to our wingers. So we have uh, Pat Richards and we got Daniel Vito. So um, both do to you know, I'm not. They're not journeymen by any means, but well, I guess Vito kind of is. Pat Richards been happily playing in the Super League for many years. Um, at Saint, no, at Wigan, at Wigan. I was going to say St Helens. Sorry, Super League fans. Uh, I feel that there's probably a big rivalry between those two teams. Oh, I thought Morris couldn't be able to get away there. Don't go over the sideline, Smith. He doesn't. Yeah, so Daniel Vito. Um, so we just talking about like Pat Richards a little bit. We'll go back to it. But um, come on, let's score. Oh, Eastwood, come on. I'm really focused on trying to score here, because I don't want to lose. Oh, I'm going to score here. Wow, I didn't even move. I was trying to do a grubber, but that didn't work. It didn't work out, but turns out we scored anyways. Um, yeah, so Pat Richards. I won't talk about Vito yet. We'll talk about Pat Richards here. So, played with um, Wigan. I'm not sure the amount of years, but um, what he's known for in the NRL is basically um, defend and then flicking it to... Uh, sorry, not the fan. Well, it is the fan, actually. But he's the one on the receiving end from the Benji flip pass in the grand final 2005. And he palmed off someone, but palm doesn't really get talked about. But it probably should, because it was a sick palm, too. Um, but yeah, he's come back and he's killed it in the NRL. Uh, I'm not sure what his try uh, tally is, but um, like his goal kicking is really good. Um, his kickoffs are invaluable. Just uh, little things like that. He's kind of revolutionised uh, kickoffs. I see a lot of teams trying to replicate it. Um, not particularly working or doing it very successfully but you know at least they're trying it um, he's brought out a new kicking tee as well I think so that's kind of cool was that was that Jamie Sowd making the tackle I think it was as if hot oh, Eastwood through get off to Guerra and Graham someone who gets tackled we're going to go here to Sean, actually we're going to go out wide to Jared Hayne. Oh, come on. No. No. Come on, Sammy. Come on, Sean Johnson. Get to him. Oh, he misses him. Come on, Sean Johnson. What are you doing? So we have it. Probably should have scored with Hayne and then Pat Richards run lengths of the field. As if he had outrun Rad Radra. I know we're just talking about Richards, but... Uh, speed isn't exactly his best asset, uh, but Vito, uh, he does rely on speed a fair bit, um, but he's also one of the new, sorry I'm just moving my mic, he is like a typical new 
um, style winger. He um, he's pretty good with pace, very strong, um, which is their biggest asset, I think. Just the strength. Um, it's really good. Like you see the Vatavise. That's why they're so good because they're so strong. They run over players. Um, and Vito uh, is not accepted that, and he's he's athletic enough to have um, like the acrobatic finishes. Um, pretty much all the wingers are these days, but I thought it's worth noting with Vito, he's a pretty good finisher. Um, but he also he is ten known to butcher a try too, but for the most part he's pretty good. Um, and there weren't too, generally like too many um, top wingers um, that made the switch mid-season. I guess you could throw in like, you know, some Chase Blair and stuff from Manly, but they were only sort of bit part players. I guess Chase Stanley um, would have been a first name player, but injuries stopped that. Um, but yeah, so Richards and Vito are our wingers. And then we move on to our centers, Arvau and Idris. Now Idris was an interesting one at the start of the season. I laughed when I heard him move. He's been terrible lately uh, for Titans. And to be particular, honest, like, he hasn't really set the world on fire at Panthers, I don't think, as much as the media like to tell you. But, I mean, he's been, he's been good without being great. Um... But that's not not important. He's probably been the best center. And then this Arvau dude, he's pretty much an unknown, but he was at the Storm up until this year. Um, I'm not sure if he'd been at any other clubs before that, but he's only young, so I doubt it. So he came in to the Rabbitohs team looking for an opportunity. I guess they started out with, um, they tried a few people ready, and um, Goodwin, I guess, would have been the starting center. And they've dropped Merritt, and they've been dropping a lot of people. Come on, Hayne, get to that. Good try, Jared Hayne. Let me go back in front. So, yeah, um, Arvia was the center I picked. Uh, like I said before, there wasn't too many other people. I mean, the only other centers who really moved were like Dylan Farrell and, I don't know, Chase, Chase, Jacob Loco, maybe, but he hasn't even played. I can't even think of any others. Um, are worth noting, anyways. Not that Loco was, but... Um, yeah, so we're going to move into the halves. The halves is prob probably the most stacked position in terms of like little like niche ones like that where like there have been a fair few movements. Um, so if we go into memory, people who you know aren't in the starting side, we'll go straight into the bench really. We'll start off with Benji. Now, mid-season, I he was an another one that I laughed at and said, huh. and then after a few SU games, I was like, oh, justified um, laughing at him because he's been dog shit, but... You know what? He's proved me wrong. He's played good, and he's been back to his best. But in saying that, you can't do without his half's partner, Gareth Widdop, and uh, it's worth mentioning halftime 12-6 try to Smith and Hayne and Pat Richards for them. Um, yeah, his half partner, Jamie, uh, not Jamie Sowd. Wow, um, Gareth Widdop, uh, the Englishman. I think probably being the buyer of the year. Um, the, th the things he brings to the side, just outstanding and I think he's really overshadowed at the storm uh, I think I mean all, all the the real like NRL fans they'll know that um, he was really a good player I mean you don't get picks for um, England while playing reserve grade for nothing like people might want to like they want to laugh at England and say ah oh, that just proves how shit England are but let's be serious here he's a good player go through and he like he hadn't just played reserve grade he played um, some first grade but only um, during origin period, I think it was. But he dominated. I remember they smashed the Bulldogs full strength in um, 20, 2011, something like that. I can't remember what year it was. 2010, probably. Uh, but yeah, Gareth Woodup is the 5'8", or maybe the half, I can't remember. Um, and then we have uh, Jamie Soward, who's the other one, who's kind of uh, restarted his career, or not rejuvenated his career is what I should say. Here we have Hayne. I was hoping we could just take it around the fullback, uh, which was Tompkins, but I guess Tompkins has the speed as well. And I was going for the shoulder parger there. So yeah, um, Soward, like I said, is another one who's uh, rejuvenated his career. Um, dropped by the Dragons last year, and just to put that in perspective, Dragons were coming like near last last year. That was just terrible. Um, so yeah, and then he moved mid-season to the London Broncos. I think he got booed by the London Broncos supporters. Um, and if you look at them now, I think they just got relegated. So it shows you the quality of team that he was playing at, and he couldn't even dominate in that league, or in that team, whatever. Like, he didn't even look any good. Um, yeah, so 
he went from the, doing that to being cheered and like I think he's loved by um, the Panthers fans not particularly anybody else um, I don't like him personally but you know he's had a good season so um, don't want to be biased and yeah we'll include him in this is that going to be in goal? damn I was hoping we could strip it there so move to the props so Starling um, you know he's been pretty good for Seagulls he's a starter which is the main thing um, I'm not looking for people who you know played five games here and there he's been a good player um, so yeah Starling while not being like a you know a big Casiano style player um, he just does a lot of hard work that uh, a lot of the other forwards don't want to do um, he's sort of player like uh, Duff Finucan, um will come in and he'll take their runs that nobody wants to take like doing the hard yards and I think that's what Starling does well and then we move on to Brent Kite who um, he's been injured but I think he's been a real good signing for the Panthers brings a lot of experience um, yeah so that was the reasoning for Brent Kite um, pretty much t like says it's like picks himself there really not too many props and yeah he was one of the best and then also for the bench or props we have a uh, Martin to power um, just really cool player um, that's that's all I gotta say like ben, um, Martin to power played for New Zealand made his debut uh, after impressing for the Tigers and uh, yeah I think that really says itself why he's in the side um, I felt like as a Bulldog supporter I knew exactly how good Martin to power um, is and I know how good he can be um, and he just wasn't getting the opportunity at the Bulldogs it wasn't because he's a bad player just because Bulldogs were stacked in the forwards at that stage which I think um, in hindsight it probably would have been good to have him now but uh, you know we got some pretty good forwards now but yeah Murray Tapao great player um, New Zealand international now probably the most improved or he's at least he's like one person that's um, gone on to play rep football after making a move and then uh, we have the second rowers we may as well get to them so we've got Joel Thompson and Tyrone Peachy um, I'm not sure if they're the starting players on um, this but so we'll just go Peachy um, Peachy, Gower um, who else is there I forget who the others are Joel Thompson's one of them Joel Thompson uh, which is going to surprise a few people because I think I talked shit about him not long ago but it's really surprised me I've um, been very impressed by him maybe the last person is Ken Edwards I, f I forget but yeah like pretty much all the second rows been pretty good um, weren't exactly uh, big stars but you know they were pretty good play oh Elijah Taylor is the exception to that um, he was a big star I think Peachy was very very undervalued at the Sharks and they really could have used him right now um, Surprised he maybe wasn't in the Asada thing, but I guess he probably wasn't playing first grade then. So, yeah, I don't know why I said that. It kind of just came to my head. Uh, so it's coming to the end of the episode, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it, and I think I've gone through everybody. Um, some might have been a bit brief, but some just don't really need an explanation. You kind of understand why they're in the side. But yeah, we pick up another victory. Uh, the score was 12-6. I think they're all scored in the scored in the first half maybe I don't know uh, but yeah hopefully you enjoyed it and I'm not sure what team we'll play against next time but yeah we'll wait till then to see but I'd like to say thank you for watching uh, I really appreciate it and I really appreciate it if you could leave a like and uh, leave a comment as well uh, who do you think has been the best signings of the year maybe leave some Super League signings as well if you're a Super League fan um, but yeah thank you for watching leave a like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time for whatever video it is see you guys bye